we have a first place regional deck profile blind second labyrinth which i'm gonna be honest with you that is not something i would expect people to play blind second like i i would have uh i would have I, I can get behind playing like blind second version of like the power spell snake eye that i played at the last regional or something like that blind second labyrinth is is something i never expected to see and they did win the entire thing so i mean let's uh let's just hop right in i uh, i am you have my attention number one in your 2024 okay. portsmouth regional champion josh kelly yeah. Yeah. I'm Josh Kelly from The Collective, and I just won Portsmouth Regional with Blind Second Lever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Alright, All right. this is my daughter's ID card. Important. I just touched it. So, for the Labyrinth card, we came three Ku Klops. So, the furniture, so we came three of each, right? Because essentially, in the good Labyrinth hands. The angle is suboptimal, but okay. Go in second. You need to open Ku Clock for like to play your deck really. Unless you open like Arias plus another trap. And Ku Clock paired with any of these is just insane. And um it gives you follow up, it gives you bodies, it's just so good. And obviously the furnitures are insane. Um I also play three Arias. Because when you're going second, the idea of this deck is when you play against Snake Eye, if you go first, you play your Labyrinth cards and they do nothing. And you're putting normal snake eye ash and you just lose. It's like no win condition. But when you go second, you don't have to commit your cards to the board. And your opponent can't kill you, right? So you only have to stop the cards that are threats. I mean, it's technically not wrong. You can't die on the first turn if you go second. That is, um, I don't know if that's a good reason to play the deck, but it is not wrong. Like the IP and Appaloosa. So you just play all of these trying to play in your first turn. But then... In a way... In a way, you're guaranteed to get to turn three. Think about that. You gotta pay more. Because <laughs> it's 12 cards, right? And they're two card combos. And they just do nothing. Uh, I don't think it's a bad approach. I, I, I genuinely think there is no good way to hit Snake Eye without killing it. Is my is the conclusion that I reached during that discussion. Like, there's two ways you can really hit Snake Eye, and that like mainly the the one way is you either kill the deck by hit it by banning something, um, like completely eliminating a line of play, or you just do like slight consistency hits. Which would be like two Snake Eye Ash or something like that, which I I don't think is a great way to do it. But no, do you want it dead? On the one hand, um, on the one hand, I understand why people do hate the deck. Like people just always hate Tier Zero, and I do understand that. On the other hand, I do think it's a little bit too soon, because uh, I mean people have spent a lot of money on it, and I I I know that a lot of you don't care for other people, but like I. I think it's it's a, it's not reasonable for the for the the company to immediately kill the deck if people have spent like a thousand bucks on it. That doesn't seem like a good business model because then people just never spent money on cards again. So I don't think they should kill it. No, but the thing is hitting hitting it without killing it is is not easy. So you need another way to play turn zero. So I play three impulse in the main and the one fire attacker. So this is letting you draw into these two card combos okay and now you you have my now you have my interest doesn't you play turn zero and like an arias is there phantasme too the rumor cannon and you're also deep drawing even more in your opponent's yes, yeah. turn yeah. Oh, it's there oh god yes. um, so the idea is you use all these cards the deep draw your, your snake eye opponent goes first they normal ash you activate all these you draw like five cards and you just this is the best deck I've ever spam seen. Spam the field of bodies, and you both play turn one. And also, because we're playing all of this, I decided to play one hand trap in my main, which is Nib. And the main reason I decided to play Nib is because um, the Snake Eye combos, what they do is they put the monster in a spell trap zone of the field spell. And then if you Nib them, they summon the monster out. And that's how they play around Nib. I was expecting my Snake Eye Bozo opponents to summon the monster when I summon Phantasme. <laughs> And then they just need to nip that down. That's so funny. But also, nip plus the furniture is good because you don't summon the monster to your board. <laughs> it was just like. There's no way that works.
There's no way that works. Your reasoning is, okay, they go for the temple lines to play around Nibiru, and then you just summon, like, Fire Attacker or Phantasme first, and they summon out the thing, and then you can nib them? Nah. That is such a wacky reasoning. I mean, unironically, it probably... It, let's be real. It probably worked sometimes. It probably worked sometimes. All right, there's space for one hand trap in this deck, and this is the one you play because it's the highest effect. And it also has good coverage against decks that FTK you. And the decks that don't FTK you, you can just play Labyrinth through. But also, the, the air lifter and the six furnishes all discard cards, right? And then you deep draw into them more with Phantasmi, so you can justify playing the discards more. So I was playing I love, transaction rollback. I love this deck already. But I cut it for the two shufflers. Oh, yes. Because Dude, you go fire attacker, draw two, discard a shuffler? Nah. That's crazy. I needed two cards to side out. And this deck has, like, this deck is really good into Pure Snake Eye, but it has a bit of a worse fighting matchup. And he's really helped with that. And realistically, like, when you're playing turn zero, you activate your trap turn zero, your opponent has to ash for the bell, and then you just activate turn one, and it's like you're not even behind, right? Because your deck is just, like, so. Uh, thank you for the four bucks. I don't know if it would be viable, but I still don't want Master Plan to come back. I do not like. Uh, I do not like Master Plan. I don't want Master Plan to be in the game. I. I don't even think it'd be that good, unironically. But I don't want to take the risk. Fast. So you do the idea that you just want to play really fast. Then also for the discard, play three back deck. This, oh my God. this deck might just be the most fun thing you can do in the format. I. I love this. I, lo I love this and I love the fact that they won with it, so it can't be that bad. Same. So, I kind of have to show the traps for this. So, it's three Black Goat and three Darumo, the generic traps I played. So, Black Goat synergizes with all the Rest Race cards because you pitch it. And then you're normally calling like an Appaloosa or like SP with this. Isn't this Master Duel legal besides Arias? Yeah, but Arias seems pretty important here, I'm not gonna lie. So they can't interrupt your plays rather than trying to stop their plays. The black goat is also not. And then um, the back jack. Obviously, you want to hit this. You hit this and the game's over, right? But back jack hitting like a shuffle is nice, which is why rollback came out for the shufflers because I wanted to increase the trap count for back jack. But rollback, if you hit rollback or back jack, it's so bad. So it's like these do the same thing. They're also a good discard, like rollback. Um, I don't. I, I didn't. They didn't come up that much, but like. They're forcing out bells and stuff a lot because your opponent can't play if you use the shufflers. If your opponent bells you, then you just play your labyrinth cards, which is really nice. Um, I also played three big welcome. This card's broken. Of course, you've got to play three big welcome. Ain't off backjack is nice as well. Um, and I played some labyrinth bricks. Lovely, of course. I do this um, 10 times in a row testing yesterday. So I got all the bad luck out of the way, but um, yeah, love is obviously insane. And I played one welcome. Because this card's a brick. If you hit it off back jack, it doesn't really do anything unless like you have a couple other pieces to go with it. And you already had a furniture in hand, so it doesn't really do anything. It locks you into fiends. It's not a good card to draw, it's not a good card to use with Arias, but you need it just like as a recoverable engine. Because normally you don't want to you'd be lovely setting back big welcomes. You want to be setting back a powerful track like the room kind of. And then for another brick, I played one Ariano. Um, sounds kind of crazy. I actually cut this at one point. But I mean, Ariana it, it does sound crazy if you're going off of standard Labyrinth, uh, like, theory. But this card, blind second, like, most of the time you're not going to be able to resolve it, right? Like, people are playing... Valor and Imperm, people make Apoloza and all that kind of stuff. I I think it's almost, it's like, it seems reasonable. It's just bad in this deck because it's too slow. You definitely need it as a target for your welcome traps because sometimes you definitely want it. But like, I think actually drawing it is not like that great. Like I'm not normal Anagrana. The only time this card is good to draw is if you open Arias to summon it from hand. And like, I play one lady as well. And reason, these cards both got cut from my deck. I was playing the two rollbacks, but I put them in. Because you struggle to OTK if they're not on your deck. This deck looks um, giga fun. And you struggle to close out the games rather than you really need them. So I was just playing like the 12 furniture lab pieces and lovely. But these are needed to close out I games, especially that. against the higher decks where they have really good grind. But that is my main deck. As you see, there's no pot. 
<laughs> Damn, uh, Josh coming up with a super base deck. What a surprise. Am I right? What a shocker. Quite too slow. It's just, we, 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 we're born like that. We're just born like that. My opponent's already had a turn and I'm activating We just, pops. we can't, we just make Are it there base. any spells? My main. Um, before the last round, I saw my opponent playing the uh, Pendulum Graph, Ritual Monster. I was like, oh, I hope there's something I can see. Negate my no spell cards. Um, so for the extra deck, play like... It's all one-offs because you just have space. So you play like the standard Labyrinth cards, which are these. You can't really justify playing more. Like, you can. I was on two Muckrack Graph. I cut it for something you'll see. Um, yeah, these are just good lack of cards. You always pay them. You pay more Muckrack if you paid anything. Um, so the other Labyrinth, like, standard monster that I play is Clara and Rushko. Um, also to make XP. SP to come up sometimes. It doesn't come up as much now, because, like, you only play the one Ariana. So most of the time, the normal summon in this deck is just a random furniture piece for Link Material. Or just, like... Is there any reason you should blind second with Labyrinth? Um, or can I just throw three impulse, three phantasma into any deck? Um, so let me try to phrase it in a way, the way I understand it or the way that I would interpret it, because I think this idea is not bad. I, I do think this idea is not bad. Um, and for Labyrinth specifically, I have noticed that too, when playing the deck in Master Duel or something, um, I haven't played it at big tournaments in the TCG, but yeah, I, I have tested the, ver the deck in the TCG as well uh you it's a trap deck so you just assume it's really good at going first and a lot of the versions that people are playing are good at going first however the problem with labyrinth is that very often you need to balance between uh when you try to go first you're only going to be able to 50 percent of the time so you kind of have to build your deck to be able to go second anyways so typically what people do is they just play a lot of hand traps or a lot of non-engine for going second in labyrinth anyways and then when it goes first, it actually doesn't have the craziest openers very often, especially if you want to play around Ash as well, right? Like sometimes you open Ariana in like a furniture and you are too scared to go for some crazy Ku Clock lines, which would win you the game on the spot. But if they have the Ash Blossom for it, you have nothing, right? So what ends up happening very often is you end up setting up something like, I don't know, Ariana, Welcome Lab, Big Welcome Lab, or like maybe the Field Spell. And... Um, that actually doesn't do that much defensively right it sets up it sets you up for a great grind, grind game because you have like the furniture pieces coming back you have like infinite card advantage but defensively you're not actually doing anything right and so i think the idea here is that when you go second you don't have to worry about your labyrinth engine acting as like defensive cards you don't have to try to stop your opponent's first push with your labyrinth cards because the labyrinth cards aren't actually that good at doing that right because the only real defensive stuff that all all the labyrinth cards even if you have all the labyrinth cards in the world the only thing that they really do is get you a, a lovely pop maybe a field spell pop that's pretty much it right if you have like some super wombo combo and your opponent has no, has nothing you can set a trap from lady labyrinth and use it immediately that's like the the most broken defensive thing that labyrinth can do which is like in most builds that's like a karma cannon right um which isn't defensively speaking isn't even that great right with labyrinth you do want to get into this sort of grind game state later on then then is when labyrinth becomes good like labyrinth actually doesn't do anything spectacular on the first turn of the game or the second turn of the game it becomes good in the long run and I think what they're trying to do is make a deck that is more likely to get into that state, right? Um, which is more likely if you go second and you play cards like Phantasme and Rescue Ace Impulse, I suppose, is the idea behind it. Because you don't have to worry about stopping your opponent's first push. You're kind of using the Labyrinth cards more as like board breakers. Well, not really board breakers, but you're, you're using it to interact with your opponent's existing board already rather than stopping them from building a board, which I think can work. Um, I, th I still think it's relatively weak to something like Ash Blossom. Like if you open like furniture plus Ku Clock and your opponent heart opens the Ash Blossom, then you're still in big trouble, right? Because then you're not gonna... You, you've invested three cards from your hand and you're not getting any mileage out of it, right? So I, it still has problems. But I do still think the approach is 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 not bad. And um, to answer the other question, in theory, 
um you could build another deck to blind second with impulse and phantasme as well yeah if it makes sense um yeah, yeah i don't know i don't know which deck i would choose for that but you know i'm just uh i'm just flabbergasted by the by the idea of summoning a phantasme against snake eyes and then bouncing it with big welcome labyrinth and then summoning it on my turn again when they summon out ip mascarena i need that in my life but i love Beat your opponent into using the snake eye field spell. <laughs> yeah, I played the one animal. Um, it's just another like link one. It's it was quite nice today because it just forces stuff. Because your opponent they feel bad, they're embarrassed when they play into the animal for them, so they negate your animal for no reason, <laughs> and then you make a spear with it. <laughs> this is true. This is true. By the way, people do that. <laughs> people do that. <laughs> but that's not just let it go through. It's like, my opponent had like an oak here, and I, I summoned an animal, and I used the effect. And it's like, they just used Vayner for no reason. <laughs> no. And like, I was like, sure, like, I was just going to lick it off into SP and it's free, right? But yeah, I think you always play this, because you need um, a Link 1 for backjack, if you need a normal backjack. And um, you don't really need Link Rebo. I don't really miss it. You're normally not normally in backjack, because you're just deep drawing. It's insane. Um, and obviously SP. SP is SP. I played one Beatrice. Beatrice is actually really cool in this deck. Like, people played it in Labyrinth before because you can use like Bestials and Arias. But Fire Attack is level 6. And this card can send Shufflers, it can send Backjack, it can send the Black Goat Laughs. And it used to be able to send Rollback. It's like maybe a reason to play one rollback, but this doesn't come up enough to justify a space in the main deck, I don't think. But when it does come up, you just win yeah, the game. I, 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 I wouldn't hate. Like, I wouldn't hate one rollback. Uh, like I, it's hard for one rollback to be super terrible for you, but yeah. Sending a shuffler just like does so much, and like realistically, if you resolve impulse, you're getting to an area on board, and this is coming out, so it's not as niche as you would think. And then I paid. Unchained extra deck package. So I didn't play any unchecked unchained main deck cards. But essentially what you can do is you can use these two bodies to make this. This and another body. Make one of these, link three opponents, and you end on a rage. Um, and it helps okay. break the boards. Uh so you need three bodies for this. You need three bodies for this. And then what it offers you is you make Yama first, then you turn Yama and the other into a Link 3, link with one of your opponent's monsters into the Link 2. So it links away one thing on your turn and one on your opponent's turn. That's not bad. That's playable. And it just gives your end board, like, extra power. So you just have all your furniture bodies just randomly on board, and you can just make them into a Soul of Rage, into an SP in your opponent's turn. And then people always forget about the Yama. And then Phoenix pop your back row, and you just summon back Rage. It's so nice. You know, this was nice for me. It doesn't come up that often, but because you have space, it's worth playing. And when it does come up, you win that game. And I played Dark and Heater. <laughs> now, this is the Jank in the extra deck, right? I played Princess, Raging Phoenix, and Delantis. Um, so essentially, the risk is most of the fires. And once you've resolved Airlifter, you pretty much always have enough nah, bodies. <laughs> if I get... If I get Heater... Promethean, Raging Phoenix, Zelantis by Labyrinth. It's it's over, man. It's actually over. To do the Zelantis line. So like, you just activate a bunch of random effects. Your opponent uses all their hand traps. Because, and they do nothing because your, your cards do nothing because you have so many of them. Um, and they're just redundant. And so your bodies can just make a Zelantis or TK your opponent. Um, this didn't come up for me much today because a lot, of the time, a lot of the time today, I was just opening Labyrinth cards. And I would have to lock myself with a big welcome. But this is still worth playing. Like, nah, when you open cool. a hand of like Phantasme Impulse. This is just cool. This is just a cool deck. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it's actually better, but it's definitely not bad. I mean, they did win the regional and I, I do see the idea behind it. It's not bad. Um, but it's just it's just cool as hell, man. That's all. That, that's, that, that's, that's a given. This just happens like every time. All right, for the side deck, um, the side deck is a bit weird because the main deck is like pretty much purely made to go second into Snake Eye. So um, if I'm playing against Snake Eye and I win game one and they get to choose, um, it depends if, they want, if they're going to make you go first or second, but I only side in two cards, so I side out the two shufflers. It seems like the kind of deck though that making it go first isn't even that bad for it. Like you still have like, you know, three black goat three the ruma 
some labyrinths combos like the only cards that don't do anything going first is the furnitures and the not the the the, the rescue aces and the phantasmes but you can still go and set your powerful trap cards and do some stuff with it because they're mainly in there for fighting they're just yeah. nice against snake eye and i in rivalry and ddg shout out darwin for the rivalry the idea is if they make you go first you like and you open a high roll hand you set up ddg um and if they make you go second then this is still a card you can hit off Ariat, you can hit off back jack like i didn't actually do that today but was, i don't like playing this card in the main because if you open like furniture plus backjack and you put a normal snake eye ash and you activate the furniture pitch backjack and hit this, you win the game. But it's just bait. Because if you don't hit this, then you lose the game, right? You've like telegraphed everything you have. Like the idea of this deck is you don't telegraph until you have to. And then when you do, your opponent just like crumbles. <laughs> um, was okay, I like that edit. I like that edit. That was fire. That was good. Okay, so what they mean by this, what they mean by this, <laughs> Is that if you play different dimension ground and you want to hit it off of backjack, you have to do furniture backjack at the very beginning of your opponent's turn. You have to do it immediately. And so your opponent knows what's up. Whereas if you're trying to hit something like a Daruma Karma Cannon, you can do that just like you can wait until they like until they're right before making Appaloosa or something like that, right? So you have some time to wait. However, I will say, I, I'm not sure if that's entirely true. I don't know if you can afford to wait with this version either because you play the Black Goat Laughs. And with the Black Goat Laughs, you also kind of want to do that early, right? Like uh, if if you if you hit if you hit the Ruma Karma Cannon, you can do it very late. But if you hit Black Goat, you kind of want to have that early too, right? To like call Flamberge or whatever before they tag out with a Snake Eye. So if they go normal summon Snake Eye Ash and summon Poplar, do you really wait and risk them going for like the ash effect into into flamberge because it the different snake eye lines summon the flamberge at slightly different timings so you never know exactly when your opponent plans to tag out next right so yeah play this because this deck like the main deck isn't great again branded like obviously the phantasmia is bad and like branded is a deck that just does more and this just stops them from doing more. I didn't actually play against Brandon today. I dodged Henry, luckily. <laughs> but um, I played against two voices twice. This was really actually against voices twice. In the finals, I opened Arias D Barrier. That was disgusting. Um, <laughs> and I played a lot of going first cards because the main deck is like pretty much made for going second. My, so problem, my problem with Arias D Barrier is that I don't, I don't even think Arias plus a trap card is that strong for going second. Uh, I, I think that combo is kind of overrated a little bit because it doesn't do anything for you yourself. You're just investing two cards to to stop your opponent from doing something. And then you're just vibing there with three cards in your own hand, right? And you haven't actually progressed your own game yet at all. Um, even if it's DDG, like, yeah, okay, the Snake Eye player passes turn, but you still have to deal with like your opponent's Ashes, Bells, uh, Imperm and Veilers on your Ariana and whatever, right? And like you haven't, you haven't resolved anything yourself yet either. And you're playing Labyrinth, so you're never going to kill them. You don't have the ability to do that, right? So you've basically skipped your opponent's turn with two cards, but you haven't done anything. You're not going to kill them and they can play next turn. So I'm not sure how much I actually like all that stuff. The Arias combos. I, I'm actually not that big of a fan of Arias in general as a card like it's a good card don't get me wrong but i just don't love it as like i don't think it's as strong as people think to set a, a powerful trap card with arias yeah, i ran it going first because like against branded you can't go second because you just you just lose they just do too much um so you side That's these fair. in and you just try to get to one of these and against like monadium uh mave thank you for the three months yes i'll be at german nationals in june uh yeah which you're not really gonna play manadium but if you play against manadium you don't want to go second um so i think these are worth playing in the side for when you want to switch into like a going first variant that makes sense and then obviously i had to my choice of third game i was disappointed because i played a spell card in my list and i almost played no spell cards in my whole list that was so, <laughs> so nice you know 
But I played three mistake errors because it's just the best fight getting lab. You can't, you don't want to play summon limit because you don't want the card on board. Everyone's signing in back row removal for your trap card deck, of course, right? So you don't want to play a continuous trap. You don't want to play deck lockdown because you can't summon from your deck. So this is just it because it lingers. And it just doesn't affect you at all. Like, um, my, I think someone mistaken arrested me like a couple weeks ago in this deck. I just didn't know how I could possibly search another card. <laughs> like, um, oh, one thing I also wanted to say. Airlifter says on it, if a card is added to your opponent's hand, draw two cards, this card one, right? It's fire attack. So you see when you activate Big Welcome Labyrinth to return one card on the field to the hand, and that card is added to your opponent's hand. You get to draw two cards and this card one. <laughs> which is insane. Um, and there's like a bunch of applications with that. Like if they go like Oak, add back a Poplar. I don't know. It, it does come up a lot where like. It came up today where they activate a Cerevis on board to bounce itself, and I just draw two discard one. It's it, so nice. So it is true that if you resolve fire attacker on your opponent's turn it's not that unlikely that you can resolve it again on the next turn right like that's that's basically what they're saying is like uh your opponent's gonna play into it on their first turn and if you have the luxury of leaving it around on the board you can do it again um, i also paid three ash for branded branded is Dude, we're scary, scared man. of branded i get that branded okay i paid the four bestials as well because this deck like the main deck just has a bad branded matchup and you're, you have a good matchup into everything else your main deck's built for Snake Eye. This covers Branded, it covers Voices for Voice. No, I love this deck. It's super based. I love that deck. That's very cool. That's very cool. I might try that. Unironically, I might try that. If I'm like, if I'm playing any, uh, if, if we do any remote duels in the next week or something like that, I might try this deck. This looks very dope. We uh, we started with the best one first, I'm, I'm afraid. I don't think it's only going to go down. I, I, I We're probably, not to say that the upcoming deck profiles are going to be bad, but I find it, it's it's going to be hard for, for them to beat this deck profile for me personally. This one was pretty dope.